here with the red hot chili peppers. This is uh, Flea right here. I have Anthony. And there's John. John Fashante. And uh, of course, let's just say, uh, great show tonight. You guys do a lot of this. It's very improvisational. What do you have to say about that? And I was raised on jazz music because my stepdad was a jazz musician. And, and I was raised in a house originally where we looked down on rock music. And I was kind of taught that it was not, you know, it was music for people who didn't really care about music. And I had that attitude when I was young. Because jazz, you make it up as you go along and you got to know all this stuff in rock. You know, it's just this paint by numbers thing. And of course I was wrong because there was so much improvisation. I just didn't know about it. Now we just automatically start every show by improvising. Like that's the first song is free form. Whatever happens, happens. Oh, and, and it's also important to be able to play a really good show or to be able to play a really bad show and to never be sure what you're going to do. With us, on a, on, a, on a great night, it could be up here, you know, and, and it seems like lately, generally, it, it is at a high place, but when it's bad, it goes to a much lower level than it would normally go. You know? <laughs> but that's what makes it mean something when it, when it reaches those high levels, you know? It's not like being on a high wire, taking the chance. It's yeah. just an element of risk. You might fall off that high wire and feel like a pile of shit on the floor, and then three songs later you're like, wait a second, I'm gonna, I don't think my neck is broken, I can, I can still play. And the business side underestimates people's ability to get turned on by improvisation or, you know, just inventing something. Like your managers might say, you know, you gotta play all the hits tonight, that's what people want to hear. But then the two people freak out. I think the audience knows that they're a part of it, and that's, that's a big part of the reason why it goes over well, is because they know that their energy is due to the music, you know, they're, they're a part of a unique experience that will only happen once, you know, that's, that's a good feeling, I think it makes them feel like the important people they are, you know. So never underestimate, when kids come to our shows, so don't underestimate their intelligence. When you assume that somebody has the intelligence to rise to a high level, then they can do it. I've just seen you guys rise steadily, steadily, and now you're, you've come out with Stadium Arcadian. Now, a lot of people would have said, hey, you know, double album, you're crazy. And now you got six Grammy nominations, and it just seems like the crowds are just better than ever. Where do you see yourself now? We've got about six more months of touring with this music, but I think in some ways, because it was such a long cycle, like our brains are already starting to think about new music and writing new songs and kind of excited about starting a new cycle. There's a really special chemistry that happens, you know, between Chad and Finn and John and myself that, you know, it's kind of blessed us with, with something that does keep changing and moving and, and going forward and not just kind of staying the same. Our relationships to each other change, you know. We've gone through a huge metamorphosis which brought us together in a really good way. For me, that's a big part of what keeps it fun on tour, you know, is that you, you really, you know, you're really happy to see the people you're playing with every day, you know. I feel like, you know, the stretch of work we've been doing, I'm pretty sure it's the most grueling amount of work we've ever done. If I didn't feel like I could trust and plan on these guys with my heart, then I couldn't, I couldn't do it. And if people think about the rock and roll life, you know, they, they associate, you know, hard parties, and late nights, lots of women. Now, you guys are all... <laughs> You know, just generally uh, all the health things you do. I mean, you diet, you yoga, you You know, it's just like, if we take the process seriously, and what we have in front of us to do this work, we want to honor the tradition of rock music, and we want to honor our opportunity to present who we are. The rock and roll business, or, or even fame in general, has a tendency to keep people the same. People fit into their little socket that they fit into and they stay they stay there. Like in some ways you're scared to change. And I think it's a really healthy thing to like to take that, that tendency on, you know, by by uh, by making a conscious effort to grow. Like, you know, one time we got off tour and I started taking math lessons. But I you know, I just I, I just want I just don't want my brain to just like die with and you've actually done a great job of like sticking to your commitment. Doing that, it's hard. But to take whatever that little bit of time is every day that you can do to like to take a step forward as a human being, like it really makes you. Can I ask one question? 
Yeah. Are you gonna eat that almond? <laughs> oh, let me ask you about the food, because you got that very kind of specialized food thing here. Uh, so tell me what's going on. You got well, hold on, well, here's the guy right here. Hey, no. That's the chef. Everybody's different in this band when they eat, but the one thing that the men at this table have in common is they're looking to eat organically. Like that's kind of a, a common blanket consideration that we have. Everything is organic, everything is fresh. He goes out in the morning and he gets local food and it's grown by like local farmers so it's not being transported across the planet and it's real. Every note that we play is directly influenced by Wayne. <laughs> I wanted to mention a couple of things. You were the first uh, use of tree free post consumer waste paper in uh, a CD jacket. And I don't even know if you guys know that as a result of that, now Warner Brothers just went 30% PC. It's a huge thing in the music industry, and I think worldwide it's going to have a big effect. But if you guys hadn't started that and stuck with your guns at Warner Brothers, wouldn't have. That was a win-win-win situation. Like, right down the line, like a domino. You know, just by you know, people like you and, and, and Julia Butterfly, you know, getting the education of how, how easy it is to, like, call up, you know, the company and say, hey, we don't want to use trees for our record company. I know that you're giving many tens of thousands of dollars to an orphanage in uh, Peru, Casa de Milagros. We just give a percentage of our earnings to charities, and we always try to find the best ones, and it's just the right thing to do. I haven't hung out with a lot of people in your business, in your business. You guys are about the nicest guys in your position that I've ever seen. And thank you so much for everything you do. You've been great friends to me, and uh, I love you guys. Thanks for taking the time to do this. And if they can get back to all, just say hello to voice yourself. My voice, voice yourself. Hi, voice yourself. Hello, voice yourself. <laughs> Thanks, guys.